Testing. One, two, three. Move this out of the way. All right, so what in the world do I have today? Well, this is a real treat. Yeah, it was taken from uh, production, it was working, and unfortunately, the plugin is very uh, different than I can use. It's like a NEMA something, and I don't have it. Uh, so that's okay. We can still definitely have fun. But this baby is a treat. Anyone want to guess what they think it is? All right, better guess quick. Maybe it's a microwave? No, they should be higher. What could it be? Today we are going to take a look at, dissect, and completely tear down, and we're not putting it back together, a huge, gigantic projector. This thing is a beast. Throwing out thousands of looms. It's been in production for about seven or eight years. It's gone through several lamps, and uh, you can see that just by uh, in the back when we take a look at it. But let me bring this around. It's very heavy, so I'll try and point at the camera the best of my ability, and then we'll tear this baby down. So, if we move this up and read here. So this is a model H266A. And uh, um, <laughs> let me see here. Uh, takes uh, 10.7 to 4.5 amps. So that's why we're looking at a special plug here. We of course have a really nice filter. Very smart to have this um, on the side rather than up or down so um, things don't fall in and out like dust. As we migrate ourselves to the right, we have a gigantic eyepiece. And this thing can actually move on a motor. So it can move up, down, left and right and of course the uh, uh, the zooming is internal into this mechanism there's the uh, model number Z8000 WU and then we have the IR sensor there for a uh, remote and we have another one here as well depending on where you're at since it's pointing up or down up here we have just a nice cover throw that away and uh, we have several inputs, so we can do it by uh, standard VGA. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. So we've got standard VGA, as you would expect. Uh, if you want to monitor and control, we have serial connectors right there. Um, and then we have RGB, a specific video for each one. These are BNC connectors, DVI, uh, HDMI, and uh, you actually even have S video, so if you wanted to put in uh, multiple different connectors, you have it. And that's the connection that I don't have, unfortunately, so we can't power it up. Um, but it does shut down after a little bit anyway. So if we move, continue to look to the right, we have a warning that says make sure you turn it off before you move it. And finally, and probably we'll start taking the back part off um, apart for a reason. But we have this back here. And this back is just as interesting as the front because we have dual high speed fan ventilation uh, to cool down the uh, lamps. And then on the right hand side, uh, we've got air codes for lamps if there's any issues, batteries, overheating. And then we have the menu system as well. So if you, uh, if this is mounted up, obviously this is not, any, this is accessible. However, if you're looking at, uh, you know, if you're able to touch this and move this, then of course you can just navigate here. So very nice touch buttons for being as old as it is and contending with all that heat. Yeah, they still work and uh, that panel is good. So not surprising. <sighs> I think this thing had to be at least uh, four or five thousand brand new. I just purchased a uh, new one recently that was um, with laser technology as a projector and that was five thousand dollars without taxes. So I'm sure this had to be, if not more. Um, so swing this back around. Well, let me tell you what, I'm gonna keep it here and then we're gonna work taking this back off first since I have lamps in there and I don't wanna break anything, especially since if there's glass there. So let me reposition the camera a little bit. Down scope. And perfect. All right, so 
the clasp on this thing is quite interesting. I'll try and move this a little bit different here. Oh, okay, that should be a pretty good view, yeah. So the clasp on this is quite interesting because it's designed to be easily removable if you need to replace the lamp. So squeeze in, pull out, and voila. You've got two metal uh, twisted strands that just help, help keep this so, to, so it can fall down and then you can work on it. And then you have, I'm gonna just use this as a stand. Oops. So you have now uh, the lamps and the way that uh, these go out is let's see here, push or pull this this lever here, and it's uh, spring loaded, and just pull this guy straight off. Now, of course, these guys do include a type of computer chip to uh, record the lamp hours. So if you grab one from somewhere else and it's been used, the system knows, and correspondingly, it can uh, decide. Uh, high, medium, or low lumens, depending on it. And then, of course, it also records the age and the manufacturer. So if it's not a genuine Epson, it may not even work. Um, they're coded like that. They've got an IC in there, so not a big surprise. Many companies are doing it these days. But this is the uh, lamp right here. And this in itself is quite beautiful, actually. It's probably a little bit hard to tell, but, you know, the engineering of these are always uh, amazing. And it puts out... A considerable amount of light and of course this guy's got two of them so pretty neat and then they've got some additional heat dissipation uh, design you can tell about just the way that it's designed a couple of these standard two-prong power so when both of these are on uh, uh, clearly this is going to take the most amount of current driving the computing system maybe uh, you know two or three amps 70 or 80 watts uh, but when you're talking about driving these guys that's where that uh, especially if it's at high peak, that's where um, uh, you're going to use a ton of that um, power. And of course, these have mercury in them, so if you're taking one of these apart, make sure you recycle these. So I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to grab the other one. Now, when these are, and that's what the warning on the side was, when these are used for quite some time, uh, you've probably heard, hey, don't move it around. Why? Because if these are very hot, the filament or other uh, metals inside is moving around because it's hot and uh, heat does weaken metal, might accidentally bump it and it will uh, break. And these are not cheap. They can be up to like $300 uh, depending on um, whether you get OEM or non-OEM if you can get it to work. So that's the reason. Now heat can be good and it can be bad. In this case, that's why we have these dual fans here, is to remove as much as absolute possible. But here's something crazy. Because it's been used a lot, and maybe not surprising, we can tell that things are starting to break down. This is plastic. Brand, you know, when this was brand new, it was tough, it's durable, you're not going to be able to bend it or move it. You're certainly not going to be able to grab it and just cringe it like this, right? It's brand new. Uh, but as heat has... Uh, has kind of done its damage on the internal parts. It's changed the molecular configuration of plastic. What do I mean? Take a look at this right here. It's starting to peel away. You can literally, you should not be able to, this is brand new, just grab this plastic and it's just, you can hear that. I mean, it's very, very brittle. Uh, so imagine this, you know, a 50, 60 pound device. And um, if it's, I mean, it's clearly not being held by the plastic, but you can see that it's become very, very brittle uh, just in terms of the usage. So heat definitely is not the best in this case. And dissipating that heat is what this whole back panel is really all about. So we've got those two lenses out, as you can see here. So now I'm gonna work on, uh, dissecting this a little bit. So I may have to fast forward the camera, but I'll keep it rolling. Whew, that thing is heavy. All right. So I actually have two of these. Um, so if I get some time, I can try and hunt down the cord, put those, uh, plug them in, and hopefully we'll get an opportunity to see what they, what it's like when it's on. Uh, I don't plan on, I mean, it's of no use anymore. They are damaged. Uh, I wouldn't want this thing uh, in my house uh, being used. But you can see here, same thing. Look at these fans. They got these huge 120 millimeter fans, 7200 RPM max. Uh, look what they're being held by. They're being held by nothing. 
See that? This is the type of damage that occurs with, with heat um, all over this place. It's just all these, uh, these I would call these large cracks, but there's plenty of hairline cracks uh, inside as well of this unit. And uh, e e this is structural right here, just to hold it together. Uh, to be able to <laughs> bend it and twist it, you can see definitely the evidence of that. So it wouldn't take much uh, for, this, uh, for this unit to, if someone were moving it, especially if it was hot, if things fall inside of it, it doesn't work. I mean, you wouldn't even need a screwdriver to take this off, just peeling it away. Oh, jeez. Quite afraid that the way that this is brittle might end up just hurting my, my finger, start making it. You know, but yeah, this is, I mean, yikes. So, put this aside, and we'll continue on. So, Let's see if I can remove the top so we can see all the glory on it right away. That would be, of course, amazing if we're able to see that well. So, screw this. All right. Same here. All right, so got those off let's see what that did all right so let me undo these two Phillips now this uh, unit is suspended by these two large handles as well so we ex of course expect to see um, metal inside of them this wouldn't consist of just plastic uh, for the obvious reason as you just saw if the structure was only being held by its plastic exterior uh, as if this was the shell of, like of a lobster, what would happen after a little while with the heat, the thing would fall on someone's head or would damage what's below. So uh, we expect to see metal in here as part of its frame. Shouldn't be any surprise uh, there. And there's the metal. So move this away. And you know, we see discoloration on this. Uh, I hope that's coming through on the camera, but there is discoloration on this. Now, uh, this white area is where the mountain was. The rest of it, um, is yellow. Big question on this is, is this from the heat? Is it yellow from the heat or is it yellow from the sun? This wasn't a place that uh, was high enough that it would be, I think, very difficult for sun to get it, especially since this was at the ceiling. So my suspicion is that it is due to the heat. If we turn it around, yeah, it looks mostly white on the outside, so anyone's game could be a little bit of UV damage it looks very very similar you probably need uh, some chemical analysis on that which we don't and aren't going to do so I'm um, suspecting then that I'm gonna have to unscrew these uh, eight Phillips um, a couple of weeks ago uh, just before this was pulled um, tried to find uh, the OEM or the original manufacturing lamp. Uh, they were about $300. And unfortunately, when I put them into this device, they weren't coming up. And part of the reason why they weren't uh, recognizing, I think, is because it recognized that it wasn't the manufacturing brand and model. And as I mentioned, there is um, heat, oh, not heat, there is a cost in these lamps and if the manufacturer doesn't make them anymore unfortunately you're stuck with finding uh, alternative brands and the lamp was originally designed by Philips company so I did find a lamp that was Philips company I said okay this should be alright but never worked very well it would turn on for a little bit and shut down I suppose if I connected a serial port on the back that, that uh, DB9M RS232 we'd be able to read probably some of the startup commands if they exist on there and that might have told us uh, why it was shutting down but as I mentioned I suspect it's just non OEM branded and Epson smart enough that hey if it's not my chip why should I work I'm not making any money off of it right all right so we've got the main support beams with their internal uh, structure that's made out of uh, metal so we're gonna see if I can grab this uh, or unscrew it and just pull it straight up. Now it's a matter of hunting where Epson put all of these Phillips. 
All right, that's taken care of. I'm not sure about this, but uh, just so we're not slowed down, I'll unscrew those. That's a uh, fake divot. Took care of that. Let's take care of this front. And we should be almost set. Hopefully it'll be able to lift that part up. The projector, as I mentioned, uh, we ended up replacing this. So the replacement projector uh, was about five grand. So that's why I was saying that this was no doubt similar, if not more expensive. Um, you would expect the cost to go down a bit in seven years. Uh, but the other thing is, um, it's uh, about half the size. Uh, and the noise is probably 40, 50% less. Um, because the newest projector uses that, the one that uh, was purchased uses lasers. So unfortunately, for this one at that time, they didn't have that technology, and that's why this thing is just honking huge. There we go. <laughs> We're not putting it together, so we should be okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's take a look at the front real quick in case you were wondering what I was doing there. So all I did was I removed just this, this front chassis and uh, here's this huge uh, lens to project that light and we can see um, gears because this is um, you can focus it while you're away uh, wirelessly so of course there's some probably DC motors maybe stepper motors but probably not DC motors uh, to change the uh, distance between the lenses i.e. focusing so focusing and then uh, bringing it uh, the image larger or not this thing can get like 230 inches 300 inches it's uh, it's just crazy it covers the room so I'm gonna let's see here straighten this out a little bit and I see a couple more screws since we removed that uh, sh shroud and supply the uh, steel for this company they uh, oh my goodness there's a couple more they did a good job because this thing is put together quite well all right so we're moving one this for the panel I understand this isn't the most exciting part of the video but someone's got to do it all right wonderful I think Without making too much of an overcommitment, <laughs> this should be the last one for now. <laughs> okay. Oh well, that just came off. So this is what I was unscrewing. Don't do that anymore. Wonderful. All right. Oh, <laughs> found one hiding. Jeez, oh, on both sides. So I found two hiding. Okay. And here's the denouement. There we go. Ta-da! Yikes. This whole area. So what is this covering? So this is covering the uh, main uh, what is that down there? Mm. The main reflecting uh, pier, uh, prism, that's what that's for. Huge heat dissipation, of course, is going to cause this damage. Uh, back here, and you can really see now that back support. Look at that damage. I mean, this just, it's, uh, it's crazy. Look at that. Straight line, because that's where the second part began. Um, so cool. Let's grab the camera and let's walk around this baby a little bit. All right. So I'm gonna unplug it, which it still should say recorded. 
never too confident about this battery here. All right, so what do we have? So we've got the lens here, and of course it's got some uh, motors, you can hear that. So just by the sound, it's definitely not a stepping motor. Refocus it and we'll turn that again. This thing's massive. Look at this. Jeez. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got the uh, controller board for all the audio and video and some data bringing in. And of course we would expect a processing unit. So we've got the main uh, chip configuration from the north side bus. We've got built-in memory over here. Um, standard capacitors. Uh, a lot of these wires are going to be to drive uh, DC motors. They're going to be to drive um, data or to control uh, solenoids depending on what their action are. We've got built-in um, buzzer right there. Pizzo electric. We've got a floating screw. That's on me. Um, looks like this must be for data, so we've got some uh, protection there for, for electrical noise. Uh, and then, as you can imagine, uh, we have the prism, which is really quite neat. So the way that this works is we've got three lights, red, green, and blue. Oh, there we go. It's labeled. Blue, green, and red. So we've got red, green, and blue. Um, LCDs actually, um, very special LCDs. So through this ribbon is a whole bunch of connectors and it's projecting um, just the red on this one, projecting what image you want to show. And then the uh, green portion is projected on this side and the blue portion is projected on this side. And this is done this way to make sure you have maximum contrast. And then after that, especially when you separate the colors, you can combine them or add two or more lamps and that's going to give you or should give you um, much deeper rich color because when you have five or six thousand lumens and you're pumping that through and focusing it on a prism, if that picture is not perfect and strong, by the time it shoots out, you know, 80 to 300 inches, it's going to seem very washed. So that's why you have this centralized here. So no doubt that this controller chip in part is for the for these three separate displays. Um, we go forward and we look at the board this way <clears throat> we can see quite quickly that or clearly that for this red display this is the main driver for this right it's in the same general area and then in this region here we have green and again we can see right there the main driver for there and correspondingly the last one we have a blue video driver and that's what's being uh, that's what's driving the blue display here so very excited to get into this cool looking prism I'm sure it'll be really neat um, so we'll definitely look at it there we also have another processor so we've got this guy here and I guess they've checked off that they've installed it this is a rather eh, economical solution for heat dissipation. So it's sticking on this uh, Pixelworks IC and of course these are two um, uh, memory or RAM um, made by Samsung. If you're curious. And then I'll kind of walk back over here for the main uh, processor. Oop. Oh, there we go. And then we can look at just one of these regions, uh, nice and close. So, uh, with this out of the way, let's walk around this side. Now, one thing I'm not quite sure of is what's going on here. So this, I'm not sure what this is. It almost looks like uh, like an aluminum fin for heat dissipation, but it's all enclosed. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there. We got tubes too. And this is going to what appears to be a fan of some sort. But, uh, does this have liquid cooling? No. Is this liquid cooled eight years ago? 
I'll be damned. I think it is. Well, that's crazy. That explains the lack of noise. When these are on, they're loud, but not as much. But I'm thinking that this is a pump. I think this is liquid cooled. Going to those uh, LCD displays by the driver um, to cool them off. Hmm. All right, so I take back. It must have been over $5,000. And of course, they would have done this to keep the noise down. Uh, and that would also explain even the increased amperage, because this is not a low power consumption um, solution. Wow. Okay, so we've got our standard DC motors, as we suspected, uh, driving this entire mechanism. There's probably like four or five on here. Not sure what this is, but we've got a... So, moving around to the side. This is the filter. So... That's gone, and this is disgusting. But this filter is there for a reason, and it's not to improve air quality for the viewer. It's to assure that these fans, which there's one, two, and three, they get nice, clean air so we're not pumping in potentially flammable debris, dust, skin cells, etc., in here and then starting a fire. That would be a big no-go. Uh, and we can see some heat damage on there as well. So, pretty cute. All right, so I'm thinking this has to be liquid cooled. This is just crazy amazing. This is sexy. I don't know if you know that, but it's sexy. This design is quite amazing. Uh, the engineering is just a marvel. Um, so we've got standard 80 millimeter fan here, um, five and 12 volts. And this looks like it's going into the cooling chamber uh, for the lamp. And we've got, I see some lenses down here. So this must be for focusing in these two lights. So we'll get a much better view of that. But that's got to be for focusing those two lights, which end up here. Uh, and then shoot through those RGB straight into um, out of the lamp so that's probably what this is to combine the, the two lights um, again we have a uh, noise reduction kind of built in we got another one here so all over the place as you expression uh, just a simple distribution board there bridging connectivity and we got a whole bunch of smaller boards um, I've got one there one there so I would assume that they're probably sensors uh, could be for heat sensors since there's two there I would suspect it might be two there. Um, heat sensors make sense. Uh, if it gets too hot, shut it down so these lamps don't start fire because they can get hot, hot, hot. Uh, looks like we have some more uh, gear mechanisms there. Uh, some more data noise reduction here so it's a bit longer. Then we've got, boy, even some more interesting uh, spiral fans there. So this thing this must be like loaded with fans. Maybe over 10 so quite cool and really nice so let me see if I can remove this part uh, this lens cabling see how easy that is and we can inspect that first I really wish I had the uh, power cord unfortunately I don't but boy would that have been nice could have uh, powered this up and uh, not start a fire but probably be close Okay, so I'm going to flip this baby around so we get a better view. And let's see if we can remove this guy. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oddly enough, that's already reduced a ton of weight. Um, just from the top casing. Crazy. All right. Yes. That, if you're an electrical engineer and you want to know what porn looks like for them, this is it. It is just awesome. At any rate. Let's go through this. Um, did I bring a... Let's take a look here. Right. So we're going to take a look here and see what's driving this. All right, so... 
Okay, so the main board for that's here. We've got data. Alright. And we got two screws there. Okay. Let's see if we can take remove that first. And see if we can remove this first. Great. Now we don't have to do as much work. So we remove this board. We can get some information off of it. So we've got some control modules here, probably for um, <clears throat> control over all of the power batteries. But we've got some data too. Um, if you're familiar with that, go for it. Look it up. Try and get it nice and close. Uh, so this is the zoom focus controller board. Uh, data is coming in through here, and then it's corresponding. Um, um, left, right, up, down, focusing and not focusing. So quite a bit of controls just for this module. You can imagine if you had to buy this because it wasn't focusing more, it would charge a ton for it. But it's not worth anything now, unless we're recycling. All right, so now let's see if we get lucky to somehow remove this. Okay, so that's for a resistor and sensor. Oh, what was that? <laughs> Whoo! Whoo! I, really? That does not seem like something you would just. Is that what that? Really? This doesn't seem like something that would be designed to be practically field replaceable. I guess if you wanted to switch optics out, unless these fail a lot, I don't know. But there is this beauty right here. She is huge, she's heavy, it contains the uh, driving motors with it. Um, look at this, yeah, sure enough. Wow. This is, this is a ridiculous lens. Let's see if, what happens if I do this. Mm-hmm, I could focus a little bit. Okay, and we'll look through the other way if you're curious. Wow, this is substantial is all I can say. Wow. All right, this is going to be a whole nother video. So we'll move that and place it down so we don't scratch the lens. And what about this guy? Would he be as easy to move? I don't think we'll get quite as lucky. It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Just trying to think of what to remove next. Very excited about it. That's cool. I can't wait to play with that. I think what I'm going to remove next actually is this main board. While we have everything together, let's uh, remove it quickly and see what we can tell about the uh, actual light concentration, the prisms. There's going to be color correcting, no doubt, uh, and then shining it straight through this prism because I have literally no idea what is in here. Uh, but I certainly want to see it as its uh, intended original design. So let's do that. So we've got this ribbon cable goes to the back. This looks like it's power for, oh, you know what? I bet that is the electric cooler. Uh, I'm looking at it right now, and that would make sense. One side gets cold, the other side's dissipation, so maybe we can even remove the cooling system intact and play with it. Mm, we can install this in a desktop. All right, so see here, LV2 fan, so level two fan. Got another fan, AFDET. Not out of focus because it's not going there. Oh, this looks like it's a sensor uh, for heat. Can start a fire. It's this guy. All right. This is going to the back, so these are going to be uh, probably driving some of the optics, some of the sensors in the back because they look like they were adjustable. Um, larger data for HDMI video viewing. Uh, sending some of that back. Oddly enough, there's a, a, a well when I pull this up we'll see there's a label that says PS2. Um, I don't think they're talking about the standard German small DIN pin 
associated uh, design. Uh, but if it was, that would mean it could have an input as a keyboard or a mouse. Um, you know, unless they're using it for some special configuration. All right, let's remove these aluminum tabs. You know what's crazy is, um, as I'm looking through this, and just quickly eyeing it, it's so clear how much damage the heat has done to the internal plastics and to the uh, and to the lamp itself, a little bit of the structure, but it's absolutely phenomenal at the electronics. It just, it almost doesn't even look affected. I thought maybe these two, because it looks slightly different uh, color, were different, but they are exactly same color. Uh, it's not varying um, as, a, as a thermal grade or a heat grade, so I'm interested in that. I'll peel these away, so we can't power you on anyway. Now let's see what it would take to remove this. Okay, so it looks like we need to address this guy here. I think it's sticking onto this. Keep it secure, which makes sense. So we have uh, RGB connectors, HDMI, DDI. All right. And you would expect, uh, well, it depends. And some of the designs I've seen uh, for something like this, the video input is a very separate daughter board than the main board. But in this case, it's all one. Um, and that's, well, I have my own beliefs on why they would or would not separate that. But I, let's see. Get the old trick. When you don't have the right tools, improvise. So we'll do this. Something's still sticking. What is it? Is there a screw? Well, I see one here. But it doesn't look like it's pivoting on it. There is a... Well, is that a DIN? No, that's S video. Okay. Oh! Oh! Oh, look at that. It's uh, another, another connector. So... Can you imagine having to put this back together after we took it apart? I mean, you guys can. I'm not putting this back together. Okay, and believe it or not, those are all just for fans. Crazy. Um, so as I mentioned, there doesn't appear to be any actual damage uh, or um, thermal variation in color that would suggest thermal variation in this. This board is just completely flat. It's not warped. There's probably like eight or nine layers of PCB on here, but it is nice. Uh, so if they can make this last this long with this much heat uh, and, and um, you know being tested on that, why can't they make a standard phone last that long? Or can they? So here's another picture of this board and again we have a, um, a segmentation intentionally of the uh, blue, green, and the red data and you can see because these are high data that there's separated from the rest of the higher powered so you got this here and then here as well as of course keeping them close together um, you've got some power modules there for power conditioning um, again main uh, two of the main processors you've got some RAM there probably for data buffering uh, this might actually be the BIOS I'm not sure Hmm, looks complex to be a BIOS chip, but you know, who knows? Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Epson made their own. Um, <laughs> make sure you're using the right lamps. That might literally be all that's for, who knows? Looking at the back side, we have another chip here uh, with a heat dissipation uh, thermal pad. And uh, most of what you see on the bottom here are for power. Power cutting, power distribution. Um, providing uh, different levels of current and it makes sense to have this on the bottom because you want to keep this noisy noisy power from affecting you know your digital inputs and digital outputs and the processing so most boards you, if they don't have enough real estate they keep them on one side with a little bit of space in this case it's clear they had plenty of room although uh, they used quite a bit of it up all right so we're going to set this aside It'll be an eBay 999 deal. So let's uh, take stock real quick 
of what we have left. The whole point of removing that board was to see if we could understand what's happening uh, here. So we've got, let me actually remove this cover, see if this gives us any more insight to the inner workings. This is a yeah, this is plastic screws. <clears throat> so it's uh, no surprise, we've got two lamps in here, and they're being... <laughs> more fans! I could drive a Tesla with all these motors. <laughs> so we've got still two lights here. We're not because of this uh, uh, shroud here, and then the fans, and we have additional sensors we can't quite see yet. Concentrating the light as we suspected coming through, and there must be another prism here because this is, you know, this is shooting this lamp. You know, combining two and shooting straight here, from what I can tell, and then it must be. Uh, redistributing all that light. I'm a little surprised that it's redirecting it. It's not a straight shot, but uh, we'll see. So we gotta try and remove this guy here. <clears throat> and we've got a uh, this is a standard DC distribution board strictly for these fans. Uh, nothing fancy here. Um, they probably, honestly, they could have integrated this on the main board, so why didn't they? Why would they spend the extra cost in engineering and design? Because these guys are noisy when they operate. It's not clean. And having um, a nice distribution that's a cheap board, even if it's a little bit of engineering, separate, physically distant from the rest of it, makes sense. Uh, so, goes to the main motherboard. Lamp 2 fan. Oh, sorry. Lamp 2, I'm guessing that's thermistor. So I'm guessing that's thermistor. Lamp 2 fan. Lamp fan one, lamp fuse one, lamp one thermistor, and then lamp two fuse. <clears throat> so I expect board and nice and checks. All right, <clears throat> now let's see what was actually plugging in on that. Oh my lord, they are just a limited amount of screws. So just for the shroud alone. Probably could have saved half the weight. If it had been Apple, they would have found a way to <laughs> clip everything. But you wouldn't be able to take it apart or replace the field on it, that's for sure. Alright, so we'll just take this off. Okay. Why this was screwed in and it's tipped in papers beyond me. Alright. Alright, see if we can remove this plastic chassis. Let's do a little test here. So moving all these. And we can take a look at this a little closer. Alright. <clears throat> Alright. Now we should be getting somewhere. Ta-da! Alright. So that's what the main board uh, that we just took out, well, the main, <laughs> the daughter board that controlled specifically these fans. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And we've got screws coming out. And of course these fans are producing heat and it's ver being very specially directed straight to those lamps. We put this on here, it's literally going right here, right here, and then right here, whatever that is. This looks. Is that another fan bank? Oh, you know what? I bet I know what that's for. I bet those are the power for the lamps. At any rate, um, so this back side, this I believe, let's see here. Okay, so. <laughs> trying to decide what that is. I thought that said fuse and TH was thermistor to measure the temperature, but that's not right because this guy here is not a thermistor, it's a fuse. I believe that's what that is. Well, I'm not sh No, it's a thermistor. That's what I would expect the... I think this is a thermistor. No, it's a fuse. No, it's a thermistor. It's gotta be. Alright, if anyone knows, um... I'm pretty sure that's what that is. It is a thermistor, even though it looks like a resistor, which technically it, it 
Where's the thermistor? Is there a resistor? I'm thinking that's what this is. And then uh, we have the actual connections for the fan one and fan two. These guys connected to the back of this that had the two big fans on there. Right here. So when this plugged in, uh, there were some contacts right here, and that's what they connected to, fan one and fan two. Fan two, fan one. Aren't you a big fan of fans? Epson is. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, let's turn this towards the camera so we can follow the light path so you can get a better view as well. All right, so we've got the two lamps slide in here and I can put one in uh, just so we can kind of see what that may look like. We've got this guy here. Oh, it doesn't stay up. And let's get him installed. All right, would help if I knew which direction. I would think it would be this way. Mm, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Uh, look at this straight away. Oh, that doesn't make sense either. Okay, that's why. <laughs> oh, getting old with my age. Oh, today's my birthday, in case anyone wanted to know. All right, so I'm gonna put this in, maybe. All right. I will not let this beat me like the coronavirus. All right, so we're gonna try this side. Ah, I got it. Of course, that makes sense. That's where the board contacts were. Duh. All right. So push this in here, and it's not all the way. It might be because I got cable in there. Let's see. So now we can see more clearly the lamp is pointing here. We've got another one pointing here. So something's got to be here to redirect that light. And it's got to shoot straight out uh, through some of these lenses and then reflect back into the display. Still a wonder why they didn't put a straight shot. Maybe it would have, it would have been bigger. Maybe it was too much thermal, or means uh, too much heat, and some of it had to dissipate. Potentially, that's what's going on. I don't know. Uh, so engineers who have done this, way smarter and wiser than myself, they'd be able to answer. Or maybe it's one of you. I'm not sure, but that's okay. Uh, let's remove this and see what she has in terms of secrets to give up. So. This is interesting. It looks like it's a standard wire just put there for no reason, but if I'm not mistaken, this is a thermistor as well. Let's see if we can with a long, interesting cable. So you got a loop back for some reason. Maybe this is for a second one for a different type. But I bet this guy here is another thermistor. Maybe somebody knows. This is, uh, yeah, it's scratches, so it's not plastic for sure. Of course, if it was, yeah, I bet this is a thermistor again, uh, making sure that this thing's not about to start a fire. If the fans fail, um, there's not a 100% way of sure of knowing that unless you have a lot of uh, sensors, which cost money and time and design and proofing. So I had a thermistor, which is, uh, Really a passive device, but it's reliable. So why would you? So heat shield. Good thing it's made out of metal. <laughs> okay. Oh, hello. Okay. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove as much as we can from the top. Then I want to take the camera and I want to see what I can see because this is just this is crazy awesome. All right. So we're gonna remove this guy and. We've got a support beam to ensure that that thing doesn't bend. That's interesting. You know, we often see these types of support bars in cars in the engine bay, if I'm not mistaken, to prevent physical skewing. There. 
I think, locked in here. All right, let's get to this. I really want to see this now. Okay, we're going to remove this, and then uh, we'll see that. Because the way that this looks from here is just... It'll make sense very clear why they have that sophisticated and that large of a filter uh, when you see uh, these prisms, because it would make a lot of sense if you had that stuff in there. All right, let's see. Let's see. All right, who's complaining? Okay, so we've got that undone. All yeah, right, there's yet another thermistor. And getting more and more confident these are thermistors because this one is next to the... Uh, Yep, same design. This one is right next to um, the uh, prism, the L uh, LCD prism, uh, to combine the colors and send it out because it gets very hot here as well. And that's where I see this, uh, this um, cooling pump at. I don't see it back here, which I kind of thought that's where it would be, but it's actually here. Um, that's 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 a little bit of a shock for me. All right. Oh, found another one. All right. I didn't think it'd be that easy to remove just one thing off here, did ya? Okay, and found two more. Oddly enough, the plastic in here, which is of course more brittle, and maybe it's why it's internal, not external, because you don't want something this brittle to be the shell. This doesn't show any thermal damage at all. Maybe there is on a structural level that we're not able to see, but still. It's kind of the old adage, if they can make a, why don't they make a whole plane out of a you know, black box? Since the black box invariably almost always is not. Of course, we know why, right? I mean, it's the, the impact. Uh, you know, how many Gs can a body take? All right, so it looks like gotta remove something here. I'm not sure what. Oh, jeez. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think I might have accidentally touched some of the prism mechanisms. Ah, shit. Sure did. All right. So here is, so this is, okay, it's not the uh, LCD. Uh, this is one of the, so this one I believe was red. So you've got red here, green and blue. Let me see if I can pull the rest of these. And these must be some type of special filter. Um, not real sure exactly what. You can obviously do some testing. Uh, I don't think it's there for heat. Uh, let's see if it's polarized. Doesn't look like it. Plus, it's glass. Now it's glass because of heat, so because it could be polarized. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. They are polarized. Wonderful. Hmm. All right. So, I guess that makes a little bit of a sense. All right. Let me take a deep breath. Okay, let's get to it. Look at this. This is fantastic. Fantastic. Look at that. So we've got light that's being produced. Let me see something. And it's being sent through this. Oh, sorry. Let me actually look through the camera. So too excited. So it's being, it's sending light through to this prism. Can you see that? Is that, oh, that's a mirror. It's the first time I'm actually really looking and inspecting it. Yep, that's a mirror. So you've got two lamps shining uh, light here, and at a 45 degree angle, it's taking the light from here, it's taking the light from here, and it's taking it straight into this guy right here, and it's shining, and I don't have near the power of that, but let me see real quickly if I can just take my flashlight and shine it straight through there.
because what I'm seeing above, and maybe you had a peek of this really cool, it's really exciting. It, it's actually just beautiful. It's really beautiful. So let me see. Uh, this is the advantage we have of seeing that color spectrum where bats don't see that. They see radar, so we're very, very fortunate to have this sight. <sighs> mm. She seems quite intent. Oh, well, okay. Well, there's more screws. Okay. That should be it. Should be one here, one on this side. I, all I want to do is shine a light through to give some idea of what this would look like. There we go. All right. So here we have, <clears throat> and of course I touched it. That's my fingerprint. So now you can unlock my phone. <laughs> so uh, here we have a specialized colored mirror. So there's some type of um, I keep using the word filter, but some type of film there, uh, and it may actually be to remove a certain spectrum of light, uh, so when it's reflecting back, it's not all of the rays. Um, incandescent light, or these halogens, I believe their halogens are, um, yellow by nature. Perhaps this clears some of the, uh, light frequencies away, so it's just white. 45 degree angle to combine the two and focus them straight in the center. Otherwise, uh, this is just a heat shield. If you've ever touched a processor, a heat shield before, uh, or a can of soda, very same feeling. I could probably, you know, really bend this in my hand, uh, you know, but I don't want to cut the hell out of myself. But that's really what's here. I'm kind of surprised, though, this, as important as it is to keep the shape of this, that it's in something that's pop can heavy, but pretty neat anyway. Um, here's the backing of it. Let me remove this. See if this is easily removable. I'm a bit curious. Oh, now we're getting into something cool. So just remove the backing of that. And here is the back side of that. So this is the part that the light doesn't see. I was a bit curious whether or not light would go through that. I'm not seeing the same film as I see on the outside, so no surprise why spend the money. And I'm just bringing it close. So it looks like some of the light does actually leak through. You're looking through that filter right now. Uh, so it must be really filtering out as much of the yellow as possible. So unfortunately, that means that some of the light is wasted. These two are literally just like staring at each other's eyes and shining right through. So if I put this through here, okay, and now I'm going to move towards the light. This is what it looks like from the other side, from the inside, looking up. Pretty pretty amazing okay so the whole reason why I want to take that out is because so the main light will shine through here and I just wanted to see if I got lucky enough to shine the light up oh. well, I'll fit my flashlight in there yet there there that's what I was looking for Let's see if I can just set that okay so take a look at this light combines it comes through here Obviously, it's way, way brighter than this. And this guy right here is a fin that's on a motor there that's closing it and opening. This is how you adjust as much light coming through. What's crazy about it, though, take a look at that color. It is like burnt to a crisp. Let me see if I can push back. Look at that. I mean, it's metal, but it is. Those two bars are just burnt. Wow, so, so powerful. Imagine what the sun's got to be like. Well, we don't need to imagine. Okay, and anyway, so zooming back out. So we've got a whole bunch of light shining through here, and then it's going through, uh, almost looks like a fish eye. I don't know if I can, oh, 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 oh. Okay, so this was there first. So I expect everything here, definitely no plastic. So we pull this guy out, and this is yet another light filter. So it could be filtering out UV. Um, it's hard to tell uh, without an analysis, but there's definitely a little bit difference. I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, you can definitely see. So it's filtering out almost, uh, maybe it is UV. I'm not sure. But this is uh, obviously glass, and uh, I'm going to set it here. <coughs> and, oh, you know what, let me put it back. So, trying to get the whole picture there. 
so what we have is this guy shining through here, going through some type of, it looks like it's breaking the light apart on this convex lens, and then you have a flat, nope, that's a con, both convex lens double-sided, but two separate. Another filter on this guy. We have something happening here. I'm not sure what this beautiful bar is doing. It's heavy though. This this is like several panes of glass. Uh, and then it's, well, I don't know. Uh, then it looks like it's actually separating. Oh, clever. Okay, got it. This must be why they, um, why they uh, did that. So you've got the original light comes through here, reflects some of the light. So I think this is like a mirror. Yes, this is like a mirror. It's half mirror, half not. And it's reflecting some of that light to this guy here. And then this, we follow this. Do -do 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 -do. That's another mirror. And then that's going into the red. Ha 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 ha. So it is not only just filtering, but it's removing all the light pollution except for what they want to see. That makes sense. Then we go through here and we have a convex lens. Maybe, let me just move this. Ooh, God, this is just real nice, very clear. You imagine having dust on this guy. I see. Okay, so put this guy back here. So, and then we have again another split. So red has a, such a huge cavity of light, but then it splits and now we have the green. This is that green LED we talked about earlier that we saw on the main board that was being driven by its own video driver. And finally we have the blue. Coming through this, uh, I'm gonna just call it glass, but it's like a half mirror and half filter and it's really cool. Um, got another mirror here, which is, of course, reflecting that straight into this lens. And then that guy right there is the LCD4 blue. And there's the ribbon tag number. I don't know if this doesn't look like there's any filter on it. Of course, now that I touched it probably ruined, but that's okay, I'm not looking at reusing it. So, that's really, really cool. So light separation was the reason why they, this thing is so large to begin with. Um, but wow, very, very beautiful. Coming through there, we've got our lovely lights. I wonder if I can take, I wonder if I can take this out and we can prove whether or not well, we know that how much light comes to the green versus the blue and the yellow. So let's see how easy it would be. Oh, look at this. Okay, so I didn't even see this guy. This is the mechanism that must protect the light when it's not being used because look, if something's going on here. You've got a mechanism to move this. Oh. Look at how cute that is. Oh, it's another filter. What in the, oh, okay, so it's a filter. Hmm, so this blocks the light 100%, and then when you want to use it, you've got this guy. Is this just one? It does look like it's just one. But interesting enough, Interesting enough, this guy here does actually show a little bit of damage. Other than the smudge that I just put there, I don't know how well that's coming through, but there appears to be almost like, uh, I don't know if it's flaking off, but it appears to be almost like humidity damage on this, which would be very odd. This side's nice and clean, but that doesn't touch, it's not as close to the light, it's this side. Hmm, interesting. So yet another filter, but with a door. <laughs> no more light. Get out. Get out. I'm having too much fun. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to remove this uh, 
do not go, do not pass, do not click 200 door. Because this is interesting in itself too. Maybe this is uh, how it limits the light. If you want some light but not all of it. Oh wow, look at that damage. Ooh! That is carbon build up. Look at, oh wow. Let me see if I can zoom in. That is, that is damage to the metal. To the metal. Wow. Crazy. Mmm. Wow, that is, it's actually, the metal is warped. And here's even from the back side peeling off. Whew, no wonder this thing uh, wasn't going to last much longer. And that's why they have thermistors, because you can't touch a sensor that can readily melt. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, I'm going to remove this guy here. This was yet another filter. Remove this guy here. You know, what's interesting is how easily these move up and down. I think I need to wash my hands. Yeah, but I need to wash my hands. Who knows what that stuff's... I don't know. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Ah, here we go. So now we've got a light shining through there. And if I take... This guy here. Yeah, beautiful. So there's our red. Only green. Disco. Roxbury, not the Roxbury. Okay, and then we have blue. Wow. So let's take a look at put this back up. Very cool. Very exciting. I wish you were here. You could touch it and just look at it. This is something that uh, as a kid, if I had the opportunity to really uh, play with these colors and just to see some of this would have definitely inspired me to uh, go into the sciences a lot sooner than I did because this is just, uh, you know, it's just quite amazing what we're, what we're uh, doing today. So I'm going to leave that there for now and then I'm going to concentrate on this guy right here because this is kind of crazy. If you ever looked at desktop computers before and they had these like big GX C cards, I'm not sure what they are. I think they're made by NVIDIA. They're like huge big cards and they got data processing and fans. It's its own computer, literally, GPU. This literally looks like that. So I don't know what this is other than there's two fans. I have a speculation that this is the power for those lamps. Those lamps, as I mentioned, this thing says somewhere around, um, uh, let's see, four to 10 amps. That will draw a ton of power. And of course, those lamps are sensitive themselves. So I suspect that this is a dual power supply, not a single. And I think, it, from what I can tell, it looks like one would go to one lamp and one would go to the other. So, pretty neat that they have their own. Pretty damn expensive. Real, really expensive design. Um, Fantastic engineering, but well designed. Let's see. Um, so, ouch. Uh, I don't, I see some capacitors in this, so I need to be a little careful. All right. What am I? All right. Ah, let me just take this out real quick. This is the power for one of those lamps. Don't want to break it because it might be, uh, you know, it could be useful someday. These are nice sometimes to be able to reuse. Certainly reuse my share of them. All right. Let's remove the grounding wire. And got this. One more. And it's probably facing the other way. Well, well, well. Thank you, Epson, for not being a total ass. Here we go. Didn't take long at all. So this is absolutely two independent power supplies, one for each lamp. So think about that for a moment. That's how 
much current they draw, and it's not just a matter of separating the power, right? I think it has to also do with conditioning the power so you have as smooth of a sinusoidal flow with reduced noise as possible. So that should tell you something about these lamps. Uh, they're not your normal household 60 watt light bulb. Uh, in other words, they really care about what power you're putting into them um, because they're conditioners, they're an independent power supply. Before, uh, uh, you know, it's affected, so let me see why. Uh, I was hoping to tear this apart, but it's pretty, it looks like it's pretty integrated. Let me see if I can get just this case off because I know some of you are really, really curious. Okay, maybe it's just me and no one's probably watching this by now. That's okay. It's okay. I won't know. This video will be here long after I am. This is like my library of Congress. I'm not authoring books, I'm authoring videos. If I die, eh, someone will know. Not that it'll mean anything to me, you know, because I won't be around. All right, so let's grab this power. Well, oh, I have to manhandle it for a woman, for a moment. Okay, well, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'll just break the damn thing. <laughs> okay, so, big surprise. I mean, it's clear Epson got a whole, a whole wholesale value on fans. <coughs> uh, and there's your power supply. Um, I'm just looking at it directly. Everything looks amazing. So, I can't wait to reuse these uh, on an experiment. I don't know. I mean, they're... they're uh, uh, clearly, it's for a high-powered situation. Situation. It's for high-powered lamps. Um, I mean, you've got conditioners there. You've got rectifiers, uh, um, relays in case something really goes bad. Extra noise reduction at the onset. So, gosh. Oh, maybe these were such a pretty penny on eBay. Who knows? I'm sure they were probably reused over and over and over again. And when you build something, why rebuild the same thing over and over again? Unless you're a contractor. So. If we take a look at this power, let's see if I can take this off real quick. Uh, all right, beautiful. Oh, jeez, more screws. So what we're looking at here, and here's why I was working so hard, is when we uh, first introduce power into the system, it's a standard three prong, right? But, so we got the ground here, but we can see shortly after that, um, we have, we can see here we have a distribution. So uh, power's coming in, and that is, I could be mistaken, but that looks, uh, Japanese design. Well, I mean, Japanese markings. So, awesome, Epson. Of course, that makes sense. Uh, I believe these are capacitors. So, initial power, just cleansing. You've got our 20 amp fuse here, uh, resettable, I believe. And then we have power out. And this guy is going to, I'm not sure, because I took everything apart. Oh, maybe this is going to the LED lights on the back. No, there's three wires. I'm not sure. Well, we're not putting it together. And then we have a nice household... I want to say relay. Yeah, that's a relay. So let me pull this connector out. You know what? I'm just going to leave it in there. But we've got a relay there. I'll try and zoom in a little bit for those really curious. Okay, we've got our relay there. Um, these are going to the different various connectors out, and then I believe that's a capacitor. Um, LE474, and it's 0.4 microfarads capacitor, uh, max 275 volts. So, uh, initial noise uh, cleansing right there. And then we have our uh, ferrite cores here. Uh, again, we see these all over the place to help uh, 
keep line noise down. So we sit here, there's another thermistor, we're seeing it on the thermistor. We're seeing it every one of these, whether it's data or power, uh, they were not uh, discriminatory at all. They put them like everywhere you can find them, all over. Here's a data wire that we believe, if I'm not mistaken, goes to a motor, yep, goes to a fan, and that even, even has it. So um, really cool, and again, yep, here's your other ferrite core. I think I mentioned this earlier, but you know, another one, so eh, they're pretty handy. Um, set these aside, set this uh, controller aside. I'm gonna unscrew it so it's not hanging down. So the next thing that I want to do is look at the other side. And now the other side I'm really excited about and here's why. This is kind of the power distribution, not really all that fun. There's a lot going on, but it's all discrete units, so it's not really that fun. That side, I have literally no idea what will possibly be going on. Because, as I mentioned, there is uh, liquid cooling in a projector. Now, some of you may say, Daniel, duh, it's been around. I don't know. Well, okay. And maybe it's been around a long time. I was certainly not aware of it. And I'm certainly glad I got to experience it and learn of it learn from it for a little bit. So let's turn this guy around. <laughs> She's getting lighter. I'm not sure why. Okay. Throw that back in there. And I want to concentrate on this section right here. I mean, it not only had its own filter, uh, and the filter, I should say, was substantial. Something like Dyson nowadays design, because I've seen it projector before in their filter and it's this little doohickey that if it costs more than two dollars to make and manufacture and ship I would be shocked um, so to see that type of filter on here which was thick had a lot of plates uh, shows uh, real reason if that makes sense all right so enough about boring filter talk I can't get this out oh, damn this housing is connected to this bad boy here. All right. So we're going to unscrew this guy. <clears throat> unscrew this. And unscrew this. So interesting is this um, cavity to dissipate as much heat as possible, right, from the additional fans. Because as we mentioned already, um, Epson <laughs> got a, a, a lot um, discount, wholesale discount on fans by the millions. <laughs> uh, I'm just poking fun. I know that there, there's obviously good reasons, but you know, it's my birthday, so I can make fun a little bit, right? I mean, geez. Okay, so I'm trying to remove this guy here, and it's, as I mentioned, it's for uh, redirecting heat flow from the front to the back, but it's redirecting it from, as I mentioned, something quite special. Um, all right, so here is, so here is part of that funnel, and there's really nothing special about it. Air goes in, comes out. Ta-da! Hmm. Now that is not so simple. Let's bring down the camera for the close-up view of a lifetime. Take a look at this right here. This is quite incredible. So it is very much is what I'm now just confirming, suspecting but confirming. This is like your standard desktop computer. This is an actual heat sink with its fins with active cooling. So this guy here, I don't recall the name of it, but yeah, you know what? What's that famous scientist, uh, Richard Feynman? What's in a name, right? Who cares? Do you know how it works? Eh, yeah, sort of, kind of. So this guy here on one side gets very, very cold. And we'll take it out. It's very flat, but it gets cold. And the liquid cooling takes that cool liquid, transfers it in and out of each... That's so cool. In and out... Um, so this will go cool air coming in, and it's returning from here. And these are, remember, the LCDs just before the, as the picture is being created and combined, and it shoots straight out. So this guy gets hot. Remember, that metal over here 
was deforming. So, you know, what are you talking about? Six, seven inches. Yeah, it's going to burn. It's going to get super hot. And that's what this liquid cooling is for. Then it transfers here to the green and finally to the blue. Uh, and then out into, back into, oh, sorry, yep. And, uh, oh. Skip lines. Okay, hit. And then back into this guy here, which is the pump. I'll try and unscrew it. But this looks like this is a pump for it that pumps that liquid. I'll pull that out. And then this is probably the reservoir because you see how this one of these, sorry, I don't know. This is on the bottom. That's where you're collecting it from, dumping it in and dumping it on the bottom. So that would make sense to me anyway. And then back here, so you do need, still need fans, even though it's cooling off, because the other side of this plate, and I don't, as I said, I don't know the name of it, but, and I never really understood how it works, but it's just fascinating. I think when I was like 10 years old, I found one of these and something or other, and it was really cool. So now I'm going to play with this. But on one side, when you uh, apply power to it, it gets hot. Like, I touch it for a second, and I'm going to burn my epidermis. Fly it out, I'm gonna smell it for days. The other side is ice cold. Like, you want your beer cold? This is well beyond that. It starts frosting, and it does that in a matter of seconds. So you put a lot of current through here. Um, it's crazy. So that makes sense then why there's a huge fan, well, <laughs> fans, um, to dissipate the remainder of that heat, and that's why it's on the heat sink. So I'm gonna put this back up and try and pull out that system. Now, since we are dealing with liquids at this point since it's a uh, liquid cooling it is a completely self-contained system what does that mean well that means as long as I'm uh, <laughs> I was gonna say handy as long as I'm not too violent with it we should be able to take it all out because when you first install it you top it off here and then that's it you don't want anyone to really ever tamper with it again <clears throat> I don't know this I don't know how this is gonna all come apart that is I just can't wait. Okay, so let's see where we're at with this. Interesting. Just when you think you've got these screws, there's just a ton more. Okay, we have a cooling, cooling bridge. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, and I said I can't pull this all up because it's all going to be probably an integrated uh, thing together, but look at that. This thing is heavy, I can tell you. So huge, huge sheet sink. That it runs this whole length, and yeah, liquid cooling back there. That's where it gets hot and cold. Obviously, this is the hot side, dissipating air as fast as you can. Obviously, this is the cold side. Um, as a bad boy fan, too. I'm telling you. Okay. Let's see if we can take this pump, which uh, it shouldn't surprise anyone uh, if this pump was mounted to this chassis, uh, it would most likely vibrate. So this thing is actually on rubber mounting pads. So as it moves a little bit, that's okay. It doesn't cause extra noise. All right, so I pull that as much as I can. I'm going to see how I can take out the reservoir. I'm thinking, again, this is a reservoir. It's kind of like a, a car, right? Um, got the radiator. The reservoir, which in a car, it's kind of like two in one. I don't know. Okay. We'll let someone else explain that better. So I'll take this out. And... Okay. Here, to remove these. It does feel like I'm in a car a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't want to pull too hard. I don't want liquid stuff all over. Who knows if it's toxic? I'm sure it is. Okay. Okay, it's kind of like a little, I don't know why I want to say TV, but okay, so we got this. So, feels cold to the touch, obviously it's metal. Oh, I can hear it. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear that.
Yeah, definitely a reservoir. That makes sense. It's on the bottom. So don't just throw this around, Daniel. Got it. All right, so we've got the cooler, this, the pump, self-contained as expected. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. This thing's cool. Look at that. It even has pet. So not only is this on rubber mounts to uh, um, uh, not transfer shock absorption, but look at this. Even the actual pump itself is an additional an additional, well, is that rubber? I'm gonna assume rubber pads. Cool. Look at that. Everywhere. You notice not a single screw for this. Just putting it, well, I mean here, but for here. Just putting it out there, Epson. Could have saved yourself a little money. Okay. Now is the big thing. I really don't want to break this. And I'm not quite sure how to do this. Because it look, it, it's going to that really fancy mechanism. They're all somehow together. Here's what I'm referring to. Try not to jitter it too much. Okay. So this guy here, he's got these two lines coming in. And again, this is I'm assuming cooling, and then the hot part goes back to cool and stuff. But I don't know. <sighs> Let me take these lenses out. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, definitely different, different filters, different colors, different filters. Wow, just so cool. All right, uh, I'll take this. I'm gonna assume. Oh. This is a convex lens that's a filter. Maybe because the blue's further down? I don't know. Probably because it's a different diameter of the mirror than the rest of them. And then there's a double convex lens. So to write the image again, but look at that. Neato. All right. Oh, wow. I see what you're talking about. No? Okay. It, the thing is just huge. I, I wish you could feel the mass of it um, and really just you, you just appreciate um, just the mass of this. You don't feel things like this anymore that are substantial. Everything these days is all about lightweight and you don't really know what in the world you're paying for in the end. Wow. Very clear, very substantial, and very shiny. So, those we'll play for or with another day. This mirror looks like it came undone, and I'm going to suspect that there's probably some type of film on this. I'll definitely have to wash my hands after this. Because there's probably crap all over it that's dangerous. So, good thing I'm not drinking tea right now. Oh. Okay, move that mirror out of the way. We've got this semi-transparent mirror. Beautiful, yeah? Honestly, just gorgeous. And we have one more mirror. This is originally for the green, I believe. Very beautiful, very, very beautiful. A one-sided convex lens. Definitely has some uh, power there, for sure. Oh, I sound like I'm starting a, a shop. Literally have no idea what this is. Uh, it's metal on one side because it was pointing towards... Oh gosh, there's a ton of damage on this. Well, we'll explore it later. And then I'm removing this, by the way, because I don't want this... To, I don't want to break anything, that's why. <sighs> Another very... <laughs> this looks like bugs. Like, uh, you know... Like... <laughs> So when you make one move, yeah, this is why mosquitoes go away. It's not just a little, stupid. look at all that. Rectifying all that. Interesting. And of course, glass. So no surprise there. And now my flashlight can kind of physically navigate the light's path because it was going in here, here, and here. So let's see if we can 
find a way to remove this thing out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to break it though. Really, 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 really don't want to break it. Screwed by now. There it is. Oh, for all the screws that they had, now all of a sudden they don't want to use any. God, Lord. Ah. ah. Where are you? It feels like it's hanging off this metal portion. It doesn't seem like it's it's adhered to at all on this uh, on this uh, plastic. So, let me see if I can undo it that way. If that's the assumption I want to operate on. Uh, let see, more screws. Okay. Let's see, because that's... Okay, maybe, maybe, yeah, I think that assumption was uh, right. I imagine that prism in there has to be pretty neat to, uh, oh yeah, yeah, oh, I feel like the Borg. I don't know if you watch Star Trek, if you don't, sorry, for you, not for me, but this honestly looks like the damn Borg. <laughs> Look at this guy. Let's see. Here's what I mean. It almost looks like this evil cube. Doesn't it? Oh, you know what? Let me take it off. I can bring it really close to the camera. There we go. Everything here, from what I can see and observe, is all glass. So I'm really trying to be as careful as I can. This must be a very, I mean, it's a very intricate design. You've got the prism, you've got three LCD displays. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what a surprise, another glass. Okay. Oh, <laughs> look at this. All right, we did it. Oh. Look at this. Look at this butte. Oh, I really hope that's coming through. Um, it's, uh, let's see. So what we have here is LCD here. We have the green one here and the red LCD here. And they are all displaying their own image and combining it inside this prism. Um, let's see if I can put some light through there. So guess which color that is. <laughs> let's see. Any idea what color you think this is? Shocker. Look at that. Isn't that honestly beautiful? How could you argue? Yikes. And What's really cool, and I'm not sure, I think we're looking at somehow another, and like, this must be a multi-dimension uh, prism, because I'm seeing a line through there which suggests multiple prisms combined. But if you can see that hairline line running right through there, that's to combine all three images into finally what we would see as the output. I don't know if you can see it better. That way maybe, you can see it a little bit. And finally we have our, our red. Very, 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 very cool. Um, very cool. 
And this is all on top of just being an amazing prism, on top of having three LCDs and combining, it's got liquid cooling, its own independent liquid cooling to cool off uh, these uh, LCDs. And so what I'm going to do, <sighs> without breaking, jeez, <sighs> okay, I'm going to try and unscrew one of these, <clears throat> excuse me, one of these displays. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Because we should be able to tell. Okay, so here's the actual, here's the actual prism. Of course, we would expect glass, but here's the LCD. And look at that. It's got even, it's got its own data driver built into this ribbon. How, how amazing is that, honestly? And there's what you would expect of an LCD, the way that it uh, mirrors in rainbows because of the uh, spectrum being kind of cut up like a rainbow. So you can kind of see that a little bit. So if this was, if we were operating this and we were saying hello world, it'd probably be backwards, but you should be able to see it in this color. If it's black, it would be all the colors, but it would say literally like H-E-L-L-O-W-O-R-L-D. Isn't that cool? You would see that in this color, in its own individual color. And when it got put together, it'd be black. That's just... Okay, I'm gonna have to undo all these. Not that prism is just too cool to, to pass up. I mean, yeah, right? So let's undo the remaining. And these um, LCDs, it's just so cool because they're surrounded by a specialized heat sink just made for them in order to incorporate liquid cooling and assure that it has, you know, maximum effect. So, I mean, really just, this is why you want to be an engineer. This is why you want to be a scientist, because you really get to do something like this, and it's just amazing. So we've got three LCDs off. Let me move this back a bit. So this is the entire prism cooling system right here. So we've got the... <laughs> we've got the actual cooler and heater. The heat is on this side and is dissipated via a, a fan. And that liquid passes through and it comes through and passes through this guy right here, passes the blue. Then it goes through the green. Finally, it cools off with the remaining that's left on this red one. And then it comes back, circles through, gets pumped by this fan. So it continues to circle through to the reservoir, it dumps it in there picks up another load and sends it through again, cycling over and over and over. What's so cool about this is, I mean, it, it is its own unique system. So um, you could really apply this to a lot of things. And why did they pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars? Okay, I don't make, let me rephrase that. Why did they pay so much money to add a separate cooling system? Well, because fans just don't do all that. Fans only cool by the air that's around it. Whereas this is direct contact, so it's extremely effective. But as I said earlier, uh, just to just to have a cooling system in here is crazy. And of course, it's also because it reduces noise. So um, now we're at the fun part. We have this guy right here. This is kind of what I meant by the bore, because it's just it's a cube, but it fascinates you and it's kind of scary at the same time because I don't want to break it. Um, Here's the bottom of it. You can see that. Let me grab my flashlight. See if we can go through. And it appears that there are more filters. So these might actually be the red, green, and blue filters that it's pushing through. So this is what the other lens sees. So you see, I'm shining it, and look at this. Perpendicular to that, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but that's, you can see the reflection of the light bulb in the lamp. I see that LED in there. And of course, straight across as well. And finally, to it's kind of a uh, very exciting. You got blue, green, yellow, uh, just on that alone. So pretty neat. Uh, this has a tab on the back of it. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah! Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. I wonder if I could. So that's the prism just on its own without going through any of the uh, additional filters. Yikes. Very, very specialized. Very cool. Alright, I don't want to break this because it's just cool. Um, 
So we'll play with it later on. All right, so we've got a lot of glass to play with later on. So what else could we possibly have? I mean, is this thing not just bonefish dry? <gasps> no, it's actually not. Um, because, as we're going to find in just a moment, we have some more things. So what do we have left in this gut? Well, I'm sure if you're watching by now, you're as crazy and uh, dedicated as I am. So let's go through and see what else we can kind of discern. Um, plenty of fans. You've got a huge fan. We can absolutely recycle and reuse this. There's two underneath down there. You've got um, another board here. And I'm not sure. This looks like there's a box there. So let's see what this is all about. So we got a fan, power, another distribution. There's another, uh, basically a power bridge. And let's see what this is. What is this? Don't tell me the... Oh, I wonder if this is the power for the main, uh, the main system board. I mean, we saw power for the... lamps, right? Is that what this is? Hmm, I don't know. I see a lot of cables coming from it. It makes sense that there should be a fan on there. Alright, so that's done. Is it all going into plastic? I see that it's grounded, so that adds a little bit more, but I'm not sure what this is, to be honest. It's kind of big for it to be power distribution. No, it couldn't be, because it came through here. No, 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 it could be. It could be additional power cleansing before it gets into the main system board. So let's, uh, of course, is my tool gonna reach? All right. can handle heat well, this internal plastic, uh, but that's why they don't make it out of it, because it is brittle, and it can break quite easily with just a little bit of pressure. All right. Jeez, uh, now what? Okay. So, this is weird, which is not what I expected at all. Um, I think I made a mistake. On my birthday. I think I made a mistake. In fact, I'm almost 100% certain. Okay. okay, so this is why you stay towards the end of the video. Because then you can find out what a bumblehead I am. I did make a mistake, and I'm not quite sure how. Let's see. Ah, okay. So, originally I said, or estimated, I'll change my verbiage like a politician, I just simply guessed, if you recall, that this was the power supply for the lamps. One lamp, two lamps. Makes sense, they're discrete units, they're powerful. I don't think that's actually true. Bummer, I know. I think this is for everything except for the lamps. And here's why. Because the lamp connectors the plug into here when you put the whole unit in and it goes to here. <laughs> Pretty conclusive. And I don't think this is bridging over power. I don't think that's what's happening. I think I think that's what's happening. Uh, in terms of power. So let me see if I can take this apart, somehow get into it. i just remove this wire. There. Yes. This has to be for that. Ah, shoot. Let's see if I can take this off.
Excellent. So yes, I think this is for the lamp. And we, interesting enough, uh, we still have two discrete units. So each lamp does still have its own power uh, unit, but there isn't uh, near as uh, much a... <laughs> Sorry, I'm really tired and had a long day at work. Uh, there isn't as many computing components on this than there was on the other board. And that's what, uh, not just in terms of uh, being discrete, because we saw two power supplies being discrete, so we got dual discrete power supplies, but this one doesn't look, appear to be as sophisticated in terms of line noise cleaning. Again, still very important, right? That doesn't change that fact. What changes it is what unit is doing it. And when you look at this um, a bit closer compared to the other one, there is a clear uh, dichotomy between how sophisticated this is and what power cleaning is going through and not. Uh, just by none other than just looking at the complexity of the board. So I'm trying to grab a view of that if I can. You can see quite readily what I mean by that. So here's the dual power supply. And you can really observe now what we've got here. So we've got your standard uh, capacitors to clean uh, you've got your, I'm guessing, um, uh, secondary. Boy, it really has been a while. I was going to say inductors, but that's not right. Um, transformers. There we go. Thank you. So we got uh, dual transformers pumping down, bringing down the voltage or bringing it up, depending on. They could be up or down. I'm not sure. Um, and then you've got current cleaning. So. Interesting on this is, again, no heat damage, so no surprise there. And then you have the main controller and driver board actually here as well. So separate from this perpendicular to reduce the line noise because electricity is noisy. And then we got two of those. Now, as I mentioned, if you compare it to this guy here, is an entire world different uh, in sophistication. Uh, not only do you have... Um, you know, its own heat sink for some of these rectifiers on the back, but clearly there's more electronics here to clean that line noise. So don't have time today to go through it all. And as I mentioned, I'm pretty tired. So um, what else do we have? Ooh, we forgot this lens. And uh, I think the rest of it is basically junk. So basically what I mean, Basically what I mean is, I'm going to leave that back in here, is I'm going to remove the fans from this. I really like to, ouch, to reuse uh, everything that I can. I don't like to throw anything out. You never know when you have future pet projects. And these fans are so unique that if you're ever in, uh, you're ever designing and all of a sudden you need something like this, if you don't have it, it's going to cost a pretty penny. And, uh, why spend when you can save? I'm not sure why this is still not coming up. How many screws Epson does this thing really need? Really? done here. Let me take this additional heat shield off. I'll just move it aside. See what other screws are lurking about. I'd like to just remove this because this is really the last bit of on here. <clears throat> oh gosh, there it is. Unbelievable. I'm surprised I was just able to use one screwdriver for all this Okay. Oh, there it's the other one. Okay, my screwdriver's not gonna fit, so we'll have at it another way. This is why we removed all the filters and the glass before here. This is why. Just 
just got to give it a little love. <sighs> On the day of my birthday. Huh. Oh, this thing is really tough in there. The one thing that's not brittle, yeah? <laughs> What I can do is this. I bent it enough. Wow. It's turning into a workout. Watch Daniel wrestle the projector! Will he let it beat him? Ah! Get my shoe out if I have to. And of course, this is tough because it's metal, screwed on metal. Jeez, it's still under, still under pressure. of so well with all that kinetic energy these things just popped right out <laughs> yeah wonderful wonderful 12 volt brought to you by Toshiba eight or nine years full operation with that much heat damage and look how well this thing still moves the bearings on this are just oof, awesome all right what's going on here got a plastic hook for a trace let's remove these all right so that was two fans. This is for the IR. IR. An additional fan. Uh, again, 12 volt. Um, yeah, that's what those power supplies are for. Those ones at the beginning. You gotta power up these guys. Keep the line noise down. So this is a slightly different. And in case you forget, airflow comes out this way. They got a nice diagram there, huh? Clever! Clever, clever, clever. All right, the rest of these are wires to go to the various system board buses, so there's nothing here that's uh, important. It's got another thermistor. No, that's another resistor. No, it's a thermistor. Oh, why would they put a resistor there? No, it's not a resistor. What is that? <clears throat> It's a case, so it's interesting. UB UB81. Not sure what that is. Could pull it out or look it up. Easily find the schematics for all this equipment online. And all right, so we have uh, achieved a level of success that is rarely achieved with this type of system because they're hard to find. Um, so, I've got some cleanup job to do. What in the world? 
But before I do that, perhaps, perhaps, what we should do is display the hoard. <laughs> what it is that we got from all this work. Um, because I have one more of these I was thinking about tearing down. So I have to ask myself, is it really worth to do all this again? This guy here, right. right, and finally somewhere we have our yeah, that's just right here. All right, so let's take a look at what we got in terms of work. So no surprise, we got a ton of different. Uh, glass that have filters on it. We've got mostly convex glasses, uh, mirrors, and uh, those were the uh, filters that separated uh, some of the light at a 45 degree angle. We've got the standard light distribution and we saw damage on the back of this guy right here. Um, I don't know how well they can see that. There's a ton of damage on this, so this filter definitely is going out. Whatever it was supposed to filter out ain't no more, at least not evenly. More glass. We've got uh, amazing abundance of fans. I'm showing three here, uh, but I in the back of the system there are two. Power supplies have two, and uh, there's a couple more that I think I removed. Then we have our very beautiful prism. Uh, with uh, additional uh, RGB filters on this. We've got a cooling pump with a reservoir, three LCD displays, and the actual cooling mechanisms are really cool. The door shutter with a built-in uh, filter, light filter as well, and various, various other stuff. We could reuse those fans there, but the rest of that clearly is just junk. Um, and then we have that and the power supplies. So pretty cool. A lot of stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you've seen it this far, thanks for watching. Um, leave comments if you'd like to maybe have me focus on something else. If you have some suggestions. Um, if I have the other one and I can power it on, I would love to to be able to power it on with the cover off and to see all this in glory and glowing. Yes, I'm going to need to bring sunglasses. We saw the damage light can do. That being said, it would be just amazing. And that's, you know, and it's not for me to tell anyone what to do, but uh, if plastic is this damaged, make sure you don't look in the projector. You might uh, understand why a little bit better now. And then finally, I mean, this is just sexy. I don't know how, what else you call it, but this lens is substantial. It's got to be seven or eight pounds. It just has to be. It's got its own built-in mechanism. So conceivably, I could put, um, you could put another light through here or an Arduino board or a sensor in here. Now this optics are designed to spread out the light and focus, so they're not going to zoom unless we redo them. But it might be interesting to see what happened if we stuck a camera on there. And uh, look at this. We have the bread board already there. Well, not breadboard, but the board already there with very easy um, drivers. They're standard DC. They're underneath this hood right here. So really, really cool. I'm really excited to play around with this and see what damage I can do. Maybe put a laser through it and see kind of if it distributes it the same way. Very cool. So that's absolutely a very good find. Thanks for watching.